Stephen, where do you stand with uh, Dak and his and his status? Yeah, we won't be, you know, we won't be expounding on those type of things with our negotiation. I mean, that's obviously something, you know, as we move forward, uh, you know, hopefully we'll continue to uh, make progress and communicate, but it's not going to be something, you know, sorry to tell you guys, but we're not going to be giving reports on how things are going. Do you need, can you do the things you want to do in free agency with his cap number at 59 and a half? Well, we got ways to adjust his cap number for this year. So, I mean, we are, you know, obviously between Dak and between Micah and CD, it's, you know, the salary cap's real for us, uh, you know, with those three guys, and, you know, in a situation where we want to, you know, do deals with all three of them. So, you know, uh, do you get to do everything you want to do with the salary cap? I don't think any team does. But, uh, you know, we're certainly going to be able to, uh, you know, go out and go to work and, and, and get the things done that we feel like we need to get done to be successful. Do you want to do those deals this offseason? Yeah, we're not, not like I said, won't expound on any details, timing, amounts, anything. No, no like. not timing, but you said you want to do deals about three of them. This I'm not going to say when. Okay. Uh, how does the cap bump kind of play into y'all's hands? And, uh, how, like, you know, well, uh, you know, the cap, cap bump, obviously, uh, you know, helps in some ways but all 32 teams get a cap bump so uh, we all know what uh, you know what that can mean as well in terms of you know the price of doing business uh, with whatever situation you're working on you paid a lot of receivers you guys that own the team mm -hmm. cd how special is it when you want to get a guy that you that you care about sign long term well it's always great to have players that you want to uh, you know sign to a second contract and uh, certainly he fits in that in spades in terms of, you know, a guy that we want to have around here, uh, you know, for years to come. And, uh, you know, it's tough to find guys like that. As we all know, you can only have so many of those guys, too, uh, you know, that you pay a second contract to. We've had a lot of, you know, players over the years that when you, uh, you know, when they're available for a second contract, we want them. Uh, but you got to fit everybody in under a salary cap. So that makes it uh, certainly a challenge. But, uh uh, certainly, CD's one where we're going to figure out how to make it work. Not necessarily. Uh, I mean, I think we've got you know really good players on both sides of the ball. Uh, you know, obviously, uh, you know as we proceeded, uh, you know throughout the season, the offense I think came around. Uh, you know, as Mike and Dak, uh, you know, meld in terms of what they were trying to get accomplished from a philosophical standpoint, and then. You know, we had some challenges, but I think some of that was because of injury. When you lose a player like Diggs, uh, you lose a player like Leighton Van Der Esch at the linebacker spot, you know, I think, uh, you know, that hurt us. So, uh, you know, certainly, you know, moving forward, uh, we get Diggs back. That's the good news. We'll see on Leighton. I'm sure he'll speak to that. But, uh, uh, you know, I think we can, you know, we're, we're going to have our uh, things that we need to get done on both sides of the ball. Jerry talked about running game, how does Tony fit that, and, and what are the kind yeah. of things? Yeah, I mean, Tony had a, had a great year last year. Uh, you know, he's the type, another one of those guys. He's the type of player you want around. Uh, but all that's going to, you know, boil down to the business side of things, you know, in terms of uh, what we can do with Tony. So uh, nothing but respect for him. Uh, not only is he a great player, he's a great man off the field. Uh, like I said, the type of player you want in your organization, but we'll just have to see. Uh, you know, where the business falls. Jerry said at the, at the Senior Bowl that you're all in for this year and you might not mm -hmm. think about the future as much as you have in the past. Yeah. Is there a, a shift in how you guys are thinking? I've never known Jerry not to be all in in any given year. But, uh, uh, you know, you, you, you know, certainly, uh, you know, we've got a great, I think, a great team put together. Uh, you know, I think, you know, the last three years, uh, won a lot of football games, I think uh, 36. And, uh, you know, certainly, uh, where we have to improve is the postseason. You know, we're going to get the right kind of guys who step up and make big plays in the postseason. And uh, uh, it's been a challenge in terms of our success there, and uh, that's where we have to improve. Are there any answers that you, that you guys have kind of come up with? Well, you know, it's a, you know, we're taking a holistic view of this thing, and we'll continue to look at it. Uh, obviously, uh, being here at the Combine is going to be, you know, a great time to spend some time in terms of looking not only at the, uh, young players that are going to be out there, but just spending time, you know, together uh, internally, spending a lot of time talking about, uh, 
you know, what we have to get accomplished, we think, in order to uh, take the next step. You, you mentioned Vanderbush. You mentioned Vanderbush. Do mm -hmm. you have a resolution with that? Are you just not ready to tell no, us? No, we'll just uh, let, uh, you know, Leighton will speak to that. It's certainly, uh, you know, an injury issue with him, uh, you know, that he's getting his hands around and let him speak to that. What do you think about where Mozzie Smith is, you know, coming up his rookie season and just be important to him yeah. to step up into that? Yeah, we have nothing but confidence in Mozzie. I mean, I think it was a transition for him that he was trying to get his hands around, you know, the technique and the way he played in Michigan versus what, uh, you know, Dan was trying to incorporate in his game. Uh, so I think Mozzie can take a big jump uh, in terms of this second year with him. He's got all the right uh, uh, skill sets, got all the right intangibles to go out there and, and get the job done, and we believe uh, he's going to uh, make a big jump here in the second year. What do you think like having Mike Zimmer back in the building? Oh, it's outstanding. I mean, he, he was with us for 13 years. Uh, I think he brings an edge uh, that will be helpful here uh, in terms of uh, the way he coaches. Uh, certainly we miss Dan. I mean, we obviously – think the world of him as well uh, but Dan uh, Mike you know brings a different way of going about it which I think can be positive for us but it's outstanding uh, to have him in this building obviously he brings a lot of uh, you know a lot of tenure to the table in terms of what he's done in his career between you know being a great play caller on defense being a very successful head coach at Minnesota uh, we just think he was the right guy for the job and it's Great to have uh, him and his family. I saw his daughter the other day back in the building. Does it what he want defensively and players and attribute, attributes and things different than what Dan wanted? There's always a little difference when you make that change. I mean, that's why, you know, it, 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 it's a little bit of a challenge when you make that transition. Every guy's going to be a little bit different. I mean, there was a difference between uh, Kellen and uh, Mike in terms of uh, – you know, the way they go about having success on the offensive side of the ball. Certainly there'll be some differences, you know, in the way Mike has had success in this league and then the way, certainly a difference in the way Dan has. Zimmer's edge, edges. what does that look like? What does that sound like? People talk about that edge. What, what, what do you see in terms of specifics? You know, I, I think it's a, you know, very uh, no-nonsense, uh, you know, hold people very accountable uh, to everything. Not that Dan, I, I don't want this to be a, well, Dan wasn't. But, uh, you know, I think Mike just, you know, the best way to say it is he's got that edge, you know, in terms of, uh, you know, how he goes about coaching and how he goes about working with his players. Well, Tyron Smith has practice plan last year seemed to make him healthier towards the back end of the season. Do you see a brighter future for him, and then what does that kind of yeah, I mean, obviously, uh, no one thinks more Tyron Smith than us. I mean, he's a Hall of Famer all the way uh, in our book. And uh, uh, certainly, uh, you know, I think uh, the way Mike managed uh, him and some of the older guys, I think we had success with that, uh, whether it be a Zach Martin, whether, you know, any of the older guys, I think it, uh, you know, helped them out. And uh, uh, certainly, you know, at the same time, Tyron's missed games. He missed a few last year, but uh, we'll certainly be sitting down with him and, uh, looking at uh, what it looks like for him to stay here. What are your, you look at, we're at the combine, I've been looking at college prospects. What are your needs as far as, what do, you, what do you look at these college guys and what do you need? What do you look at your team needs? I mean, first of all, you want the right kind of guy in the building, a guy who's very competitive, a guy who's, uh, you know, is all about football, if you will. Right. I mean, we all understand faith and family as well, but uh, football's got to be important to them. And then, you know, we just, uh, you know, look for a guy who's going to really, help take this team uh, to the next level. And uh, certainly we'll be spending a lot of time on that and trying to, uh, you know, make sure when we're uh, picking a player that he fits, you know, those things. And, you know, we certainly have obvious needs, uh, you know, on both defense and offense that we'll need to uh, to look at uh, with guys who are going to be free agents, obviously Tyron and Baidaz. And, uh, you know, you got guys who are, uh, going to be free on that side. Uh, obviously, the linebacking situation, we got a little thin there. Uh, you know, what Mike's vision is for Micah. Is he a true, you know, pass rusher most of the time? Or has got some, you know, last year he ended up, that's pretty much what he did. And I think, you know, very effective. But I think it hurt us with our linebacker depth because we were thinking, of, you know, he was going to do more linebacking. But, you know, I think between the linebacker situation and, you know, obviously we're, we're still working work in progress on getting better against the run. How difficult is it to formulate a full draft strategy compared to recent years until free agency kind of shakes out to see what the team needs might be? 
I think it's the same every year. I mean, you're obviously, uh, you know, going into a draft. You never want to be drafting for need. Um, you want to, you know, be able to scratch those hitches in terms of those needs, uh, you know, in ways that, uh, you know, take care of those situations. But, uh, you know, at the same time, you also want to be able to draft guys who, you know, who you can jump in and play. So, you know, there's a fine balance there, but I don't think it's any different than any other year. There's quite a few positions that need to be Not necessarily. I mean, it's always good to take it all in. I mean, there are, as you say, there are there are positions where there's a lot more depth, and there's other positions where there's not as much. And certainly that factors in, you know, to how, how you allocate your dollars, your resources, uh, your draft picks. Uh, you know, you, you project out where you think, uh, you know, guys might be available, uh, you know, late in the first round, late in the second round, because, you know, we have been picking later in the rounds because of our success uh, during the regular season. How about continuity Johnson. on the field? How big has the continuity been in your personnel department? Because you've had some really good drafts the last couple of years. How important is that just to have the continuity with the scouts and, and Will and those guys? I think continuity is always great. I mean, it's always great to have continuity. Uh, you know, at the same time, you got to embrace change. And so, uh, you know, if you do have change, you can embrace it, and it can be good, good for a team, just like I was talking about. Uh, you know, uh, changing to Mike Zimmer and uh, what he'll bring to the table. Uh, I think the players are ready to embrace that and uh, certainly we will miss Dan. Uh, no one thinks more of him than the Cowboy organization. But, uh, you know, we'll embrace that. So we've got a lot of work to do in that area and, uh, you know, in terms of the defense. But, you know, having a lot of our players back, a lot of really good football players back, you know, is a good thing. And certainly at the key spots. You know, you, you got a guy like Dak, uh, you know who's the you know who is the uh, leader of this football team. Uh, it's always great to have him back. Uh, he certainly does everything in his ways to uh, make everybody better and hold people accountable. And uh, you know he sets a high bar and a high uh, high standard. You called the, the the big three back CD Mike. It's a good problem to have because you get good players. How much how how challenge, more challenging is it than it was years ago when you had guys at the top of the market? now that the numbers have become so much greater than, I don't know if the cap has risen the yeah. same as the player salaries. It's, it's always a challenge. When you start to have a lot of players that you're trying to pay, you know, top of the market, you know, it's a challenge. But the cap has gone up tremendously. So it's, uh, you know, to me it's not a lot different. It's just, uh, you know, how many guys you're trying to fit in there. And to me it's, a, you know, it's about players. Uh, you know, we had a situation last year where, you end up losing a guy, but you end up getting four players rather than what you might have paid one player. And, you know, that's the way you have to look at it. Would you rather have, you know, three or four players for three and four and five million apiece or one player for 20 million? So those are the, you know, things you get into weighing in terms of, you know, where you're better off. And uh, certainly that quarterback position, it's it's not unique to us. Most, a lot of teams have it. I think, uh, you know, we you know, when you project out probably through next year, there's probably going to be 16 quarterbacks making 40 plus million dollars. So it's a, you know, it's real and uh, it's good because you have one, but uh, it's a challenge too in terms of the salary cap. Yeah. 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 On that point, is it important with those three guys in particular that you mentioned other teams also get all the cap bump as well to not let them hit the open market free agency so you're not in a bidding war with anybody else? Yeah, I mean, I think everybody has their priorities in a certain situation. Uh, you know, it's, you, you get to this time of year, it's, you know, if you don't have something already done, you know, obviously the three guys that we talk about that are the priorities, uh, you know, they won't be able to go to the open market this year. So, uh, you know, they're, they're going to be, you know, on this team next year, and that's a great thing. It's, you know, but once guys usually get to this window and they have a chance to be free, uh, you know, Usually it's hard to get something done. Not impossible. It gets done. We've done it before. But usually it's real hard to get something done because they do want to see, hey, what situation's out there. Because you don't have to, you can't use the tag on Dak and there's no trade and all that, do you have to start thinking about the possibility of life without him at all at this point? Yeah, we won't get, our whole thing with Dak is him being a cowboy. That's all that's on our mind. And uh, certainly don't get into those type of thoughts. NBA has a, NBA has a Supermax. Two players on the team get a 
a lot of money. Would you be opposed to that for the NFL? Uh, I'm not going to get into theoreticals <laughs> today. Right. I'll so, pass on that one. <laughs> so, so not timeline-wise, wise, but you do want to extend that? Oh, yes. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. What's your best-case scenario for organization terms of the yeah. Jackson contract? What do you hope happens there this offseason? You know, like I said, that's just details. I mean, I, I don't want to get into the details of that. And, uh, you know, we want to be certainly respectful of the negotiation. And, uh, you know, certainly we have our thoughts and our views. But, uh, you know, he's I'm sure Dak and his team have their thoughts and views. And we'll continue to see how we bring those together. Meeting this week with Todd here in the media? Yeah, like I said, I'm not going to get into any details on anything when it comes to these negotiations. Michael, have they begun? Not going to get into any details. <laughs> Are y'all done? I'm no, not no, done. No, no. <laughs> coach McCarthy not here. What's he missing and what's different about not having a head coach? Yeah, I mean, you know, this day and time, there's, a, you know, you see more and more, uh, you know, coaches who are, you know, they're really focused on, uh, you know, install and, and, and what we're going to do next year. Certainly Zim the same way on the defensive side of the ball. Uh, we can get all the work done. He can get all the work done. They can Zoom. Uh, and hear these interviews. Uh, certainly, I think I find myself watching the TV more so than I do what's going on on the field because you can see them closer. And uh, so I don't think they're missing anything. I think it's just fine that they're doing what they're doing and they're prioritizing, you know, their installs. Uh, both mics are, if you will, uh, and you know, prioritizing that over being here. Last three days or so, you've been here for the competition committee stuff. What do you anticipate kickoff related wise and yeah. any rule changes? I mean, uh, I'm positive that we can come up with a better uh, situation uh, for the kickoff. I mean, you got 13 kicks and 12 of them were through the end zone. Uh, uh, you know, I think everybody uh, wants something different. They don't want a ceremonial play. Uh, they want it to be a real play. And uh, we just got to do it in a way that's, uh, you know, safe for the players. Uh, so you don't have the injury rate that we've had in the past, that it's more in line with what a typical football play is. So I think that's really important. And, uh, you know, I think the special teams coaches, uh, Bones is on that committee, doing a great job at uh, looking at some alternatives. So, uh, you know, I think we'll have something uh, to present to ownership uh, at the spring meeting and uh, hopefully something that we can do. It'll probably be for a year more than likely, just because uh, they're going to be doing something more than likely that's a little different. But uh, I, I think it can be a, a positive play that the fans uh, would really enjoy. Is Hill Drop a little difficult to manage or ban in a sense? You know, it depends, uh, you know, depends on who you're asking. Uh, you know, personally, I think you can. Uh, I think the officials can officiate it. I think it's got to be defined the right way. Uh, but I, I think it can be. I think it's a play that needs, you know, me personally, uh, you know, needs, a, you know, it's certainly not something that anyone condones. And, uh, you know, it's a play that needs to come out. And uh, uh, the question is going to be how we do that. I think it's going to be all of the above, in my opinion. But, you know, it's got to be education to the players that this is not what we want. I think there's probably going to be fines involved in it uh, at all levels. <laughs> and then I think, uh, you know, at some point, uh, you know, that's you know where it gets a little tougher, but I think a lot of people do believe it can be officiated. Not everybody, but a lot of people do. A lot of your a lot of your players since the season and lost have talked about the culture and how that needs to be addressed or changed. Who's that? A lot of your players since the season ending lost have talked about the culture. The culture. Yes. I don't oh. know. Have you guys addressed that? Are you talked about that? Have you that that was a problem that maybe you ever come up with reason why y'all lost? But I don't know. If, has that come up in no. you worry about the culture on no, the team entitlement or anything like no. that? I think uh, you know, from the organization on down we feel we feel good about our culture. You always want to be better. Uh, I will say that. I mean you, if you're not you know, if your results aren't winning the Super Bowl, I think everybody's saying how do we you know, how do you ultimately be the last guy standing? Uh, but I think overall between you know, organizationally, between uh, you know, our coach, our our, our personnel department, uh, I think our leadership on our team's outstanding. So, you know, you're always going to have somebody who's, you know, going to say something, uh, you know, that's not, you know, that might be, hey, that's their particular thought process on why we may have come up short, but I don't think in general. Personally, I don't think it's an issue. With Jerry talking about the running game needing to improve, 
how have you kind of evolved in that from a personnel standpoint? Obviously, you drafted Zeke really high. Um, is it free agency? Is it draft, mid-round, high-round? Like, how do you kind of look at I think it's a, the, everything. I mean, I think we have to continue to look at, uh, you know, our schemes and what we're doing there. I know Mike uh, certainly, you know, he's, a, as you well know, when you talk to Mike, he wants to run the football well. He think that's, you know, at the end of the day, thinks, you know, that's very important. Uh, part of the offense is to be able to run it effectively. And so then you're looking at, uh, you know, how we do that, you know, how we coach it up. And you're looking at the players, uh, the personnel, uh, the whole nine yards. So uh, I don't think it's any one thing. I think you got to look at the, you know, look at it holistically and then come back and say, here's here are the changes we're going to make to be better. Mike has said he wanted, Mike has, at the end of the season, Mike had said, we need some thumpers at linebacker, bigger guys. Mm -hmm. When we look back on the season, what are your thoughts about the linebacker position. You well, know. I think when you, you know, when we move Bell down, <laughs> down there, you've got a, you know, a player that started as a safety playing linebacker. So uh, there's no question uh, losing Layton was a, you know, that was a, a difference maker in terms of uh, what he was bringing to the table in terms of his size and length. And, uh, you know, I think that's a very fair statement that we can be more physical and uh, need more uh, size at that position. I think Mike Zimmer, you know, when, he talks, I'm sure he's going to echo those thoughts too. He wants more size there and physicality there. And I uh, mean, I think Bell was outstanding, but he is, you know, he, he, he was a safety when he started the season. So, uh, and then, you know, in general, that was our scheme, you know, a more of a three safety, two linebacker scheme than we were a three linebacker, two safety scheme. So, you know, I think those are all things that, you know, Mike's going to get in there and we're going to look at and we'll come up with a good solution that we think will make us better against the run. I mean, obviously running the football and stopping the run are at the top of our list uh, this offseason. recently said that he's on your dad's advisory board. <laughs> what do you think that consists of and, and who else is on the advisory board? <laughs> <laughs> well, we all know what we think of Jimmy. Uh, certainly it was great to get him uh, in the ring of honor. Uh, and he's certainly a guy... Uh, that Jerry respects his opinion. I respect his opinion. Uh, the success he had here with the Cowboys is undeniable. Uh, that's why he's in the uh, Pro Football Hall of Fame. That's why he's in the Ring of Honor. Not just what he's done for us, but, you know, as a coach in general. So, uh, uh, you know, I know Jerry picks up the phone and likes to uh, talk to a lot of folks that he respects. I mean, he used to talk to John Madden as well. So uh, I think he's... Uh, you know, certainly somebody it's always great to bounce something off of. But you try to keep Tyler Smith at left guard? You know, that's a, you know, remains to be seen. I mean, it's starting to feel like Larry Allen uh, all over again. I mean, he, the great thing about Tyler is his versatility. He could be a great left tackle, too. I mean, Larry Allen, I think, played either one or one and a half or two years at left tackle. I think he made all pro those years, too. So uh, he can, uh, Tyler's got that in it. And, you know, I think at the end of the day, when we're, you know, all through misogyny, we'll have a good spot for him. And the great news is we have Tyler Smith, and uh, his versatility certainly brings options uh, to the table in terms of how we look at this team uh, as we move forward. With Trayvon Diggs and Jamar being overshown where they are with their recovery, is it realistic to see them do any sort of work by OTA time, or is it more realistic for camp? I think it's more realistic for camp when you look at the injuries, uh, you know, that they had. You know, they're going to be out there working, but, uh, you know, to actually be participating in team activities is probably a reach. But uh, they're certainly coming along great. The great news on, on both those injuries, if there can ever be good news on an ACL, is they were done early. But do, you, do you want to bring Gilmore back, and what does that mean for Bland if you do? Yeah, I, I think, uh, you know, at the end of the day, uh, you know, those are all things that we're going to be discussing, and it's all about the business and how the overall picture looks uh, as to who – you know, who exactly we're going to bring back. Obviously, Stephon Gilmore was a great addition for us last year. Not only is he a great football player, he's a first-class act. And uh, we're very pleased uh, with what he did, uh, you know, for this team and uh, have nothing but respect for him. How do you look at the wide receiver position behind CD with Gallup and the year that he had and then Cooks? And, and how does it fill out? Like I said, we're not going to get into the details of, you know, where we're going to go. We feel good about that position, though, I uh, thought Tolbert had a real breakout year uh, in terms of uh, what he did for us. Uh, certainly Brooks did a lot of good things. We had him active, and I know Dak was comfortable with him uh, as a receiver. And so, uh, 
you know, feel good about that position. Obviously, Cooks is just like Stefan. He not only was a great player and good for us on the field, but what he brought off the field, his leadership, his veteran leadership was uh, undeniable and uh, thought he was outstanding. And then you certainly had CD, so it's a good group. I think the Saints going to be practicing out in Southern California for camp. I have no idea. You'd have to ask New Orleans. Oh, I didn't know. <laughs> I was wondering if you guys might practice with them, if they're going to – I think they're using the Rams a little bit. Yeah, I'm just not sure where that is. Okay.